All right, this is the, the Lakeville Open Space Committee meeting call to order at 7.03 p.m. We'll start off with the first item and reading the Zoom uh, draft statement. As a preliminary matter, this is Jesse Medford, chair of the Lakeville Open Space Committee. Permit me to confirm that all members, staff, and persons anticipated on the agenda are present and can hear me. Members, when I call your name, please respond in the affirmative. Liz Nash. Aye. Brian Reynolds. Aye. Mike Schroeder. Aye. Adam Young. Aye. Donna Wabrick said she couldn't make it today. And uh, there's also Fred Freudema, who I don't know if he's sworn in or yet, uh, yet not or not. Um, so those two aren't here, but we do have a quorum. Um, there's no anticipated speakers on the agenda. Good evening. This open meeting of the Lakeville Open Space Committee is being conducted remotely, consistent with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12, 2020 due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public gatherings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order, which you can find posted with agenda materials for this meeting, allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless such participation is required by law. This meeting will not feature public com uh, comment. For this meeting, the Lakeville Open Space Committee is convening by video conference via Zoom as posted on the town's website. Please note that this meeting is being recorded and that some attendees are participating by video conference. Accordingly, please be aware that other folks may be able to see you and take care not to screen share your computer. Anything that you broadcast may be captured by the recording. All supporting materials that have been provided members of this body are available on the town's website unless otherwise noted. Public is encouraged to follow along using the posted agenda unless I note otherwise. We are now turning to the first item on the agenda. Before we do so, permit me to cover some ground rules for effective and clear conduct of our business and to ensure accurate meeting minutes. I will introduce each speaker on the agenda. After they conclude their remarks, the chair will go down the line of members inviting each by name to provide any comment, questions, or motions. Please hold until your name is called. Further, please remember to mute your phone or computer when you are not speaking. Please remember to speak clearly and in, in a way that helps generate accurate minutes. For any response, please wait until the chair yields the floor to you and state your name before speaking. If members wish to engage in colloquy with other members, please do so through the chair, taking care to identify yourself. Go to the first item of the agenda. In accordance with the governor's order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law relating to the 2020 novel coronavirus outbreak emergency, the January 6, 2021 public meeting of the Lakeville Open Space Committee shall be physically closed to the public to avoid group congregation. However, to view this meeting in progress, please go to facebook.com slash lakecam. You do not need a Facebook account to view the meeting. This meeting will be recorded and available to be viewed at a later date at lakecam.tv. Uh, is anyone other than lakecam recording? No, nothing heard. All right, um, next item on the agenda is the meeting minutes, approval of October 7th, 2020 meeting minutes. Um, I received an email saying there was something that should be uh, 
edited in there. Um, let's see. I should probably put this up on the screen. I screen share this just a second. All right, can everybody see this? Yes. Got it? All right. All right, I'll, I'll read these because uh, Brian has not had a chance to see them since we could have emailed them to Brian. Um, on November 4th, 2020, the Open Space Committee held a meeting at 7 p.m. remotely from various locations. The meeting was called to order at 7.02, 7.02 p.m. by Chairman Medford. Open Space Committee members present were Chairman Jesse Medford, Liz Nash, Brian Reynolds, Martha Mike Schroeder, and Donna Wabrek. Not present was Adam Young. Late Cam was recording the meeting for broadcast. In accordance with the, uh, well, the first um, paragraph of the agenda is on here verbatim. It's already read that. And Chairman Medford begins with the roll call vote of the members and then read an introduction regarding the need for a remote meeting and how a remote meeting will be conducted. Meeting minutes, Chairman Medford explains that there is a person that has been hired to do the minutes for the Open Space Committee and that this person will watch the meetings and provide the minutes for review and approval. Uh, we went into old business in introducing potential new members. Um, Fred Freudema, uh, looks like they want a spelling correction on that. So, so we'll have to send that in um, off the top of my head. I don't, I can't, I don't know the spelling either. Um, Fred was present for the discussion. Chairman Medford noted that he was unable to reach Niles Carter to get a response on his interest in joining the committee. Uh, Mr. Freudema introduces himself to the committee and gives a brief overview of his experience and familiarity with land trusts and grants. Upon motion made by member Mike Schroeder and seconded by member Brian Reynolds, Open Space Committee voted to recommend to the Board of Selectmen the appointment of Fred Freudema to the Open Space Committee. A roll call vote, Chairman Jesse Medford, aye, Liz Nash, aye, Brian Reynolds, aye, Mark Schroeder, aye. Um, then we discussed the open space plan work group meetings. Member Mike Schroeder spoke about the extensive information that continues to be updated in the extensive uh, section of the background of the open space plan. It is noted that she has not reviewed the inventory of land of conservation of recreational interest and how that needs review. We just hope that it will be ready for the next discussion. Uh, discussion updates by Open Space Liaisons, uh, Mike Schroeder of the APC, nothing new to report, Jesse Medford Park Commission, nothing new to report, Patrick Marshall, MPIC, nothing new to report, and Brian Reynolds, Historical Commission, Member Reynolds updated the board on the field trip to um, the, the, on the field trip, the Lakeville Historical Commission took to the town of Canton to see about more ways this Historical Commission can be active in Lakeville. Then we discuss updates on properties currently of interest to the Open Space Committee, starting with 149 Bedford Street. Chairman Medford read into the record a letter from the planning board dated October 23rd, 2020, regarding the site plan review of 149 Bedford Street. This property is located at the intersection of Bedford Street and Rhode Island Road. It is noted that the planning board will be reviewing this project at their November 12th, 2020 meeting. They're looking for feedback. It's unclear what the reuse of the property will be other than it looks like a 1,482 square foot office space with outside parking and storage area. This is not, this is not an open space matter. And Lakeville Hospital properties. A member Liz Nash spoke about the 43D committee and the schedule of hearings once 43D application has been filed. There's a reference to the letter written by Adam Young, Mike Schroeder, and Liz Nash that was sent to the 43D committee for consideration. Member Nash reported that the 43D chairman did receive the letter that he stated he would read it into the record during the opening hearing of the 43D project. The first hearing will be on December 3rd, 2020. 
the Open Space Committee agrees to attend and read their letter into the record at the meeting. Member Liz Nash reads aloud the letter that was sent to the 43D Committee. Uh, Lakeville Country Club, nothing new to report on that. The Barron Hills property is nothing new to report on that. Uh, chapter land spreadsheet of the Lakeville 61 A, B, and C properties. There's reference to the narrative that member Mike Schroeder posted and shared on social media a week ago. It was posted on Lakeville Helping Lakeville and the Lakeville Agriculture Farming Community pages. Member Liz Nash reads aloud the post that was put up. It is noted that the comments to the post were positive and that as of yet, no additional properties are forthcoming. New business, correspondence and announcements. Chairman Edgar noted that he has had a request from Selectman Fabian at the Open Space Committee look into vacant non-conforming properties that are not supposed to be built on to see if the town can work on acquiring those parcels. Chairman Medford does have a list and he will send it along to the members. In other business, it is noted that the next meeting of the Open Space Committee will be on Thursday, December 3rd, 2020 at 7 p.m. Location remotely as part of the 43D Lakeville Hospital property hearing. Adjournment upon motion made by member Brian Reynolds, seconded by member Liz Nash. The Open Space Committee voted to adjourn at 8, 10 p.m. Roll call vote, Chairman Medford, aye. Liz Nash, aye. Brian Reynolds, aye. Martha Schroeder, aye. And Donna Wabrick, aye. All right. So, um, Liz, was it, you sent uh, some edits that you had recommended. Um, well, only because, so what was the date? This was, what date was this meeting? Uh, this one is November um, 4th. Didn't we go back and forth and say something about how maybe maybe at the November fourth one we didn't go back and forth and say something about whether they would read it at the third or they would read it at the first public hearing on the on um, I mean uh, the the we land did thing. one meeting in November yeah. right I don't remember us doing two oh, because it never did get read in and that's the only thing that but we'll, right. we'll we'll talk about that later but. I mean, I guess this can, uh, for what it is, it can. Yeah, I mean, we we may have discussed whether or when we should have it read in, but yeah. whether or not it they did doesn't really pertain to the to the minutes. The minutes. I agree with you. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yep. I'll let it go. There's some spelling stuff. But... Yeah, there's some spelling things in here. Um, you know, I can email those corrections. That I'm, Two of the Fred and I think Donna's name was spelled wrong too. Uh, yeah. Once she gets to know our names, she'll have it down. That's right. <laughs> this was the first set of minutes she did for us. Right, right. Um, do we have a any um, motion to accept with the uh, spelling corrections? I know. I I I move that we accept the minutes as uh, as. As, as written with our spelling corrections. The minutes for uh, what is that? November, November 4th. November 4th. Yeah. And do we have a second? Second, Brian Reynolds. All right. Um, we'll do a roll call vote in the order I see you on my screen, starting with um, Liz Nash. Aye. Adam Young. Aye. Uh, Brian Reynolds. Aye. Mike Schroeder. You're on mute. There you go. Aye. Aye. And I, I notice uh, Fred's here now. Hello, Fred. Fred's here. Yeah. Um, did you get a chance to swear in? I did not. I just returned from St. Louis yesterday. Right. I've been gone for about uh, three weeks. Okay. And uh, I did get a, an email indicating that the uh, selectman had approved it, but I haven't right. had a chance to get sworn in. So I don't know if I can vote or not. Right. No, you can't vote until after you swear in, but it's all right because we have a quorum here. So okay. um, you have in a month to do it now. So. <laughs> That's going to um, be quarantined for about 10 days. And after that, I'll swing by. No problem. Great. 
Um, so that is everybody except myself, uh, Jesse Medford, also I. So that is unanimous in favor. All right. And the next item on the agenda. All right. Old business. Introducing new member. Fred just did that. Um, next would be discuss the open space. Op open space plan work group meetings. Who wants to jump in on there? Me? <laughs> Go ahead, Mike. Uh, I, well, of course, we haven't been having any group meetings, but what I have done is I have, I have finally gone through the whole section that, uh, the, uh, that we need to update. Uh, there are sections that we cannot do until we have done the survey, and then they will have to be completely rewritten. But the ones that just need updating, I have gone through and marked all the things that need to be, be updated and what agencies we need to contact. As you know, uh, Adam did this wonderful Google Docs thing, but I could not use it because I can't, uh, I can't, my, I've lost the ability with my computer to uh, to select and drag and that sort of thing. So I wrote it out. I've sent it to everyone. You wouldn't have gotten it till this afternoon. Um, but it does. You, you it'll make no sense unless you have a copy of the open space plan before you. It does use page numbers. So I don't know if uh, I, I I did the Google Docs thing use a different. It, I think it had a different pagination than the hard copy. Am I right, Adam? Yeah. Uh, so yeah. that. Uh, so you might, I don't, and I don't know if you're online, if it looks different. Um, so I, I didn't really think about that when I, when I did it. it. It might make sense anyway, but, um, but a comment that I would make is that um, everybody does need to read the entire plan. And that, that doesn't mean that you have to read the regional plan and all the addendums uh, because there are quite a few. It, it's, but there is about, um, um, it's maybe like 107 pages or so that, uh, uh, that, that everybody does need to have read all of that uh, before we can really uh, um, accomplish very much. And I would urge people also, if you have not done so, to read the master plan, just to help us to, um, to see what needs to be done with this. So anyway, you should have it in your, in your email boxes, that they are, um, my review. Yeah. And I would, I, I would speak out right now and say, my thought is that I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to do all that up, updating myself, but I would be more than happy to take on whatever needs to be talked about with, with Nate, Dar, uh, uh, Nate Darling, our building inspector. So it would seem to me that if people could just kind of like pick one, one agency or person that they're willing to like contact and, and, and work through so they're not so that people aren't contacted by a lot of us again and again, I would be happy to see if I can't get uh, Nate to uh, to work with me for a while. All right, that would be helpful. Anybody else have anything on that? Yeah, I have uh, some things I'd like to share. First, I'd like to say thanks a lot, Mike, for all that work. I'm, I haven't taken a look at it yet, but I'm sure it was um, very time consuming to address all those points. So. Uh, just thank you. <laughs> um, I, I will uh, now turn to the open space survey that I um, really want to get out um, as soon as possible, but I recognize that um, that might take a few months. Uh, it seems to be the way things work uh, quite often. What I'll do is um, I could either read it aloud, I could share it. It's not all that long, so maybe I will just uh, share it and read as we go. And then I'd like to get your commentary on whether I'm seeing things correctly or whether um, you might be able to give me some feedback and point me in a, a different direction. So what I'll do now is to share my laptop screen and read over uh, what I have in front of me. You should be able to see my screen now. Uh, this is a letter that I have written to the Board of Selectmen regarding the open space survey. Um, and I'll simply read it and then we can uh, talk about it after. To whom it may concern, in 1999 and again in 2008, the Town of Lakeville Open Space Committee conducted an open space and recreation plan survey to understand the attitudes and behaviors of town residents with regard to open spaces and natural recreation areas. 13 years after the last survey, the Open Space Committee aims to conduct another such survey in 2021. 
In order to raise awareness of the survey and encourage a large sample size, we intend to create an informational leaflet that describes the survey and tells the reader how and where to access it. The leaflet will not contain the survey, but instead it will direct residents to the survey, which will be completed online. And I'll speak in a moment about what we'll do as far as non-online options. Uh, a draft of this leaflet is appended to this letter and I'll, sh I'll share it at the end. Uh, I also list expenses. So expenses for this project are estimated as follows. $384 for online survey software. This is a one-year subscription to surveymonkey.com. $156 for leaflet printing, uh, about 5,000 leaflets from vistaprint.com for $156. $100 for a raffle prize for participation incentive. I think this is very important. Um, for those who don't know, I, I do uh, research uh, professionally and I know that uh, incentivizing participants really gets that sample size high, which means we get a lot more useful information from it. So from these uh, items, it, it totals $640. I look at this as um, quite a minor expense given the amount of knowledge we'll be gaining from it. Uh, survey design and analysis will be conducted by myself, a member of the Open Space Committee, a professional researcher and statistician on a volunteer basis. This survey will not only benefit the Open Space Plan, but will also benefit other boards in town that can make informed decisions that better reflect the will of town residents. For example, the survey will assess to what extent residents are satisfied or dissatisfied with specific recreation opportunities and preservation initiatives. Therefore, the survey can help Lakeville prioritize future improvements and protections in a data-driven way. To maximize the number of survey responses, we wish to include this leaflet in the town mailings of tax documents sometime in 2021. This method of distribution has been verbally approved by the former treasurer Deborah Kenny, but she noted that this action requires the consent of the Board of Selectmen. And I should also uh, probably check with the current uh, treasurer as well. Uh, we ask that the board please authorize this leaflet's inclusion in a 2021 tax mailing, as well as the modest expenses required to enact this important project. Uh, sincerely myself, uh, dated December 23rd, 2020. I can update that as well. And lastly, I've included a draft of the leaflet I am not a graphic designer. You'll note this is not beautiful, but it gets the point across. Um, for those listening, it says Town of Lakeville Open Space and Recreation Online Survey. This is a rectangular leaflet. It is intended to be approximately three inches by eight inches. So it'll fit in an envelope without having to fold it and hopefully not uh, way too much uh, for reasons of minimizing expenses and postage. It also says $100 raffle for participants. Again, this is to uh, incentivize um, participation and get a large sample size. And then there's a quick, um, you can think of it like an FAQ, uh, frequently asked questions on the right hand side of the leaflet. First, it says, what is it referring to this survey? The Open Space Committee is conducting an online survey to learn how you use open spaces in Lakeville. Questions will ask about your outdoor hobbies, your attitudes towards nature preservation and more. How do I participate? Go to the link below on your computer. The survey is easiest to use on a desktop computer. If you cannot use a computer, leave a message for the Open Space Committee at the Board of Selectmen's office, phone number included, and someone will contact you. And I also include uh, the, at the bottom, the link to the survey. And you'll note that I'm emphasizing if someone cannot use uh, a computer uh, to complete the survey, they should leave a message. I don't anticipate that number being very high uh, but for people who do leave a message and want to participate, uh, I will myself call them. Um, I will be on the computer and I will uh, read them the questions and record their answers. Uh, this seems to be, um, at, at least the way I'm thinking about it right now, the most effective way of getting their responses, uh, considering all the constraints around uh, the virus and other uh, practical considerations. I'll pause there and open it up to see if anyone has any uh, questions or comments. Uh, this is Fred and Adam. Great job. I uh, really appreciate it. I think uh, you've analyzed it quite effectively. Uh, the costs are very modest. Uh, I'm impressed. Uh, I can't imagine why the town would reject that. Uh, one comment I had about people who might not have access to a computer, 
might be senior people. And so perhaps we could work out a scheme of some sort to get uh, anyone who couldn't get access to a computer to be at the senior center and be able to use a computer there. Right, that's a, that's a great idea, I'll write that down. Is the senior center still operating right now? Well, that, that's the other thing. I was thinking that once this all happens, perhaps by you know June or so, at least the seniors in town would have been vaccinated. Right. And uh, and and it, then the senior center may be open. My wife and I were talking about the fact that this is probably a significant this COVID thing is significant for the seniors as they have no place to go and no one to to talk to uh, in terms of trying to socialize with anybody because a lot of their activities focused around the senior center. Mm. So I'm hoping that it will be open at least by June and perhaps that'd be, that might be time enough. Although you, you didn't include uh, anything in here with regard to a time frame on when you thought the survey would get started and when you wanted it to be complete. Right. Right. And that does, I think, depend highly on when the tax documents go out. Um, I just got my tax document in the mail just now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I don't know how, do they come twice a year? Is that, is that the format? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So the next would probably be in August or July or something. Yeah. I don't know. I'm new. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's that's what I would say. It's that it's because I, I've had mine too. They came out in December, so you would expect them to come out in another six months. Mm. Uh, so so it does mean that we are delaying what we're doing quite a bit. But so be it. Uh, th thanks very much, Adam, for uh, for for your efforts. Your 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 letter is very good. I we don't have a budget, so I don't know. Uh, uh, I mean, even though it doesn't seem like an awful lot of money, uh, but. Uh, We've never asked for money before, so we'll just have to see how receptive they are. Right. I did have one question, and that was that uh, in the past, I think our surveys have been uh, uh, anonymous, and these will not be anonymous, right? Because uh, uh, your people are going to want that. <laughs> Do, they can they have the option? If can they have the option of being anonymous, so that uh, rules them out of the uh, uh, um, uh, of the uh, uh, in incentive, but. Uh, can that be an option? Yes, it will be anonymous uh, by default. Um, I encourage, there is one page towards the end of the survey uh, that does encourage uh, the, uh, the participant to indicate what precinct they're in. So uh, yeah. it also indicates demographic information, all of which is optional. They don't have to, to you can just submit mm -hmm. the survey without providing that information, uh, but it yeah. does help so we can figure out a, if, if the town is, you know, 33% per precinct and we get, you know, 10%, 10%, 90%, we know that we're oversampling part of the town. Uh, so that does help us to know that information, but they don't mm -hmm. have to provide it. And it's certainly, yes. we're not asking for um, their names, uh, their phone numbers, unless uh, they choose to provide it. Yeah, okay. So, uh, and, and I will note that I'm seeing a few uh, chat uh, posts here. Um, so, for example, one of the things in the chat says the tax bill mailings are perhaps quarterly. Uh, that might be January, March, July, and October, mm -hmm. in which case we, we would have um, our, our choice of kind of when to send it out. And if we do want to include uh, the senior center as part of our uh, considerations, maybe we should be targeting July uh, anyway. Um, and furthermore, uh, there are some some details to work out about how the winner would get their money if it's going to be anonymous. Uh, that's a good point and something I'll need to think through. Uh, and also whether we can market through Facebook and else. So uh, thanks a lot for uh, for those questions and comments. Mike? Mr. Chairman, uh, I just was 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 thinking that it would be a really good thing if we could have this the section that we need to update all done by then. And another thought is that uh, even though even though the open space plan hadn't been accepted, I wonder if just so that people when they do the survey might be interested in looking at some update figures that perhaps we could publish tentatively on on on, on our um, on the town website within within our uh, you know the, the space that we're that we as the open space committee are given. Perhaps we could post the the updated part with updated figures. Does that, does that sound like something we might be able to consider doing?
something we can consider, look into. I mean, but it, it would depend on them. Sorry for interrupting. Anything to incentivize, I would, I would certainly be on board personally. Well, sounds like a obvious. Yeah, I mean, it, it, obviously, it's a good idea. So we will. I guess we should try to work toward that, right? And no objections to it. It could be a goal. <laughs> so I would like to ask, um, as far as next steps goes, um, my thought process was to check this letter with the current treasurer because the idea for having the uh, leaflet go out with the tax documents rather than the town census, which was an idea. Um, this came from, uh, I believe it was the uh, the former treasurer, um, but I can uh, check with the current one. And then if, if, if everyone here is on board, uh, we can then send it to the board of selectmen. I'm assuming that's what the right process is, but I'd look for your advice. Yeah. And I would check with the, the new treasurer, um, First, so how long has the new treasurer been here? I haven't heard yet. They are they just recently had this change? Well, when I spoke with uh, the former treasurer, Deborah Kenny, I believe this was, it was warm out, so it must have been several months ago. Uh, I think she said that she was retiring soon, uh, if, if I have my facts straight. So I'm assuming there is currently a replacement for her. So they just passed um, that we're not, it's no longer an elected position. It'll, the treasurer for Lakeville will be a appointed position. And that passed today. Hmm. So I assume that uh, they'll be appointing someone soon. I, I mean, that's my, literally my assumption. So, mm -hmm. Just um, today then, all right. Right. <laughs> I just happened to trip over that on Facebook. So <laughs> don't give me any credit. I just got lucky. <laughs> on top of things. <laughs> All right. Um, any, is there any more with that? With the, uh, I just want to say, I mean, I think the survey is terrific. And, we, and, and we'll get it out in whichever tax mailing that we possibly can. If it's quarterly, I mean, if it's March, that would be great. But if we want to wait for the seniors to maybe have access to computers at the COA, July is terrific. Um, oh, where was I going with this? But, uh, but we also want to make sure that because not everybody, you know, the generations are different. So we're also going to have this completely access. So we should also be uh, marketing this survey, I think, electronically. Um, so we could probably post it when we have it up and running on the face uh, Lakeville helping Lakeville right and maybe Lakeville complaint box if they're still in business by then and uh and maybe we can link it to the web and 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 a link from our portion of the town website right right so just the electronic venues also yeah. my addition to that yeah we can pretty much um you know, whichever mailing comes up next when we're ready to go I mean yeah, there's there's a few to choose from. We don't really have to pin it down to just one. It's whichever one we can get in next. Go ahead. Should we somehow should we somehow when you in that letter that goes out to the uh, selectmen, could or at some point can we alert the town to the fact that we are looking for the next mailing? So if anything came along, that that uh, please let us know so that we could get it in it. I don't know what kinds of things they might be sending out. Right, uh, that's a good point. I would hope that um, people open their tax documents. I guess that's kind of the big worry is if you send something and they don't open it, that's a little yeah. weird. You're kind of forced <laughs> right, to yes. open your tax documents. Um, and a couple uh, quick points in the chat. Uh, the lakecam.tv bulletin board is an idea for, for posting as well as uh, meeting uh, state house news ticker. I'm not myself familiar with what that is, but um, I'll look into it. And the last point about the survey I'll make um, is that if we do have any kind of flexibility about when to launch it, uh, not only does July seem um, 
appealing for the reasons of hopefully the senior center uh, being uh, up and running, uh, but also just in terms of what the content of the survey is, it's very outdoors driven. I really think that especially uh, for a lot of people who have stayed home um, and maybe not gone on as many hikes or played at Ted Williams uh, as much recently, to have something out in July, I think it might be at the front of their minds. Um, and, and hopefully we'd get uh, some more responses than if we ask them questions in the middle of March when <laughs> people haven't really been out, outside lately. So uh, that's where I would lean. So I'll, I'll pencil that in as um, the goal, I guess, is, would be July. All right. And I guess we can move on to the next item in the old business. Um, discussion updates by the open space liaisons. Starting with Mike Schroeder, as well as at Pond Complex. There's still at this point is really nothing concrete to uh, to report, except that there have been uh, a number of studies done of the uh, uh, the sedimentation of the river and uh, and. Just zeroing in on some goals of what uh, uh, and, and possible actions, and there, uh, I, I would say there's an incredible number of uh, of environmental agencies that and and, and uh, that have been pulled into uh, into the study. So, I'm hoping I'm hoping that before two years are out, we will actually see uh, action. I mean, physical action. <laughs> I don't know if anyone heard you because you had a visitor on your lap, a cat. Everybody was looking. Oh. <laughs> <Just kidding. laughs> Let's see. Do I need to repeat next, or was that just? Uh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, next is me, uh, Park Commission. The um, only I guess, open space related thing that happened since the last meeting was just in this past week. There's been some clean up the public works department has um, gone and done some cleanup at uh, Clear Pond in hopes for you know, being open actually in 2021. So they've been doing some work there recently um, you know, with down trees and clearing up the trail. Um, just a lot of cleanup. Um, so next would be Patrick Marshall, master plan implementation. He did not send me anything for this month, so nothing new there. And uh, Brian Reynolds, Historical Commission. Well, the Historical Commission met in early December, and we will probably meet again on the third Wednesday of this, of this month. And, uh, yes, we have more work we need to do. Hmm. All right. Okay, um, discuss any updates on properties currently of interest to the Open Space Committee. We started off with the Lakeville Hospital properties, which is the big meeting tomorrow, joint meeting that we're involved in. We can discuss what was talked about, <coughs> excuse me, um, last month since the, the last Open Space meeting. Go ahead with that, Liz. Well, um, yeah. <laughs> Where to begin? I guess we should get, I mean, just technically, we should get the original letter read into the record because he read the addendum but didn't right. read the original letter, which is a little wonky. Um, but it is what it is. And then, meanwhile, that said, I don't know if you, any of you took Mike's advice to read those two letters by the consultants, but uh, one of them goes above and beyond, I think, where we were at. So I, I have no idea how this whole thing is playing out. <laughs> <laughs> so um, what's anybody's feedback on that? Because that really, that really floored me. Good, Mike. Yeah, well, my thought is that we, we need to uh, uh, speak highly in favor of it and, and say that, that it very much follows in with the things that uh, the things that, that we that we uh, uh, 
that we consider important. I only there were only like two things that the cat is continuing to get over here. Um, there were only a couple of things that they said that I had some problem with, and that was uh, uh, it, it was it was a matter of species. I want to see more diversity in the species, and I and I did want to speak to that uh, uh, as far as that letter was concerned. I just wanted to say that I thought that. Uh, Two species of trees was was uh, of uh, of hardwood trees was not enough, uh, even though they had good reasons for the one they chose, and they mentioned uh, uh, oh gosh was it Australian pine was that uh, Austrian pine, yeah. and my under and my research on Austrian pine is that it is uh, it's subject to disease and it is not a native species, um, so I would I would would urge them not to use it and just use a put in a few more uh, uh, red cedars if they felt they needed more evergreen. Oh, and I, I was gonna urge them where in that gravel thing, it occurred to me, why not American holly? Indeed. Indeed. Are you willing yeah. during that meeting when if the moment presents itself to say that, Mike? I am, do you think that, uh, how do I get the moment to present itself? <laughs> yeah, I know. Um, I'm not entirely sure. It, it, hopefully we'll all be aware of it. I mean, when they talk, when they read the letter or they bring up that letter, I mean, I, I believe that in these other meetings, I've heard the chair say, does anybody have anything they'd like to add about that? I think that would be the opening. Yeah, yeah. Um, Doesn't the agenda for tomorrow specifically have a spot for open space to speak? I haven't seen an agenda for tomorrow. Uh, you? Did you see it? Yeah, um, I emailed it with this no, one. You did. You did. I, I thought there was a specific spot for us to speak on there. Oh, I certainly hope so. Hold on. <laughs> um, yeah, and it is funny that we have corrected invitation. Um, haven't gotten a chance to read that original letter either. I, I, I'm, I'm not, you know, very familiar with how these large, these large meetings work. And there's so much that has to be covered in this, mm. as you all are very aware from attending that last meeting. Yeah. Well, I do know they gave, they, they gave Dick Scott a, a lot of time to talk. So I would assume that they're going to give us some time. I would assume you're correct. I have the um, the agenda in front of me. God bless you. Um, it, it does say that uh, it's, it's expecting comments from planning board members, followed by board of health members, followed by CONCOM members, followed by us. And this is um, before uh, questions from the public and abutters, um, and, and then some additional uh, items. So we're kind of right in the middle there. Uh, I don't know how much time that'll give us, um, but maybe we want to... Uh, prepare how keep we it brief. <laughs> yeah. well that said I wanted to ask about that so what is the most important thing to us because my perception when I read that letter and I could be incorrect not our letter but the letter from the consultants they seem to be much more focused on um, the abutters uh, and the, re the, the residents um, experience of this piece of property as opposed to for instance, whether we have more than two deciduous types of hardwoods or whether they're all natural species, because they called out that that's a non-native, that Austrian. So what is our, we, we want to be on the right side of the residents getting their view blocked. And we, because what we think is important is being on the right side of not having invasive species, which they completely spoke to too mike um mm -hmm. yes, we did yeah yeah so i mean where's our where do we really what's the most important thing we want to accomplish here as far as if they take our advice for anything you know what i mean <laughs> I have I have very strong prejudices, Liz. I think you know that. <laughs> well, I think we can talk them out of the out of the invade out of the non-native. I think we can talk them out of the non-native. But didn't in in the letter that we sent, didn't it talk about bunching the the trees 
and they're talking about not bunching the trees and making it more actually sound blocker. I, uh, you, you mean in the letter from, from uh, IBI? Yes. They talk about larger areas that uh, instead of having, uh, uh, this is my understanding, I've got to reread it, but I thought they were saying that you needed larger areas that were meadow and larger areas that were groups of trees rather than, than a little bit here and a little bit there because they thought that maintenance would be more difficult if it was too broken up. That, that's what I got out of it. Uh, well, I got that out of it also. Um, so, so how did everybody, did, did anybody else get a chance to read that letter? And should we just simply throw our weight behind it? I mean, do you know what I mean? I mean, I kind of think we should because they seem to be really paying attention in some ways to. Yeah, I, I had very much the same impression. They addressed things we didn't even think about. Right. They talk about, and I, I couldn't ask, I couldn't bring up the plan so that I could really read it, but it, uh, they were addressing an area that, that I hadn't even thought about, some area that they say was going to have, it was a temporary uh, uh, something, and they were going to have to cut down trees to use it, and they were saying, that's ridiculous, don't, I mean, find another spot where you don't have to cut down mature trees, and I thought, wow, they're really looking at this whole thing in a way that, that I couldn't see it because of the, the, the nature of the, of the plan I was looking at. Right. So, so yeah, I'm very much in favor of saying go for it. Right. My my only uh, two cents would be um, that I agree they they put a lot of thought and effort into this, far more thought and effort than I put into the letter I put together, and and you both helped me with. Uh, and so I would be um, certainly on board with uh, signing our names to their letter, at least in spirit, uh, if we can. Um, work in a few caveats uh, that meet, you know, our emphasis of native species and anything else that stands out to us as, um, you know, maybe their letter gets things 99% of the way, and maybe we chime in uh, and say, please accommodate a few things that matter particularly to us, but uh, their letter packs a very strong punch, and I think maybe we should let them do the swinging. Oh, that was well put. Well said. <laughs> yes, well said. <laughs> Well, that said, I mean, I guess if you get a chance to read their letter, I guess we'll just show up tomorrow night with individually um, with anything we think is most important. I mean, whether it be let's lose that non-native species, right? Um, or if it's, it's, you know, something else that you've thought of, I guess, once you read the letter. And remember, these are specialists. This, this is what they do for a living. Adam, your letter is, was, is very appropriate you you don't do that for a living so right <laughs> so i'll reread the letter for tomorrow and i'm sure um you all will as well and um i, I would propose that we let mike take the lead i, <laughs> I was going to say we probably need a spokesman i was not going to volunteer <laughs> to be the spokesman <laughs> okay so i will i'll have to uh, take a few notes so i don't put foot in mouth <laughs> There's a reason we keep doing that to you, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> you like seeing my toes in between my teeth. <laughs> Very good. All right. I think um, that settles it for the hospital for today. We can just go to the meeting tomorrow and discuss it more then. Mostly listen and Mike discuss. Um, so the next property on the agenda was 149 Bedford Street. And I haven't heard anything new on that since we discussed it in October. I don't know if anyone else has heard anything or has anything to say about it. Intersection of Bedford and Rhode Island Road. All right. I thought there was something in the newspaper, it was Brian Reynolds that said there was going to be a new development going in there and there was an issue about signs. Yeah. I did not see that article, no. Yeah, I read what he what he's they want a sign that's like an electronic sign that's 
Huh. And it's kind of worrisome because it'll be flashing and, and really kind of visually noisy at an intersection. Um, and this was the Middlebrough Gazette, was it? Yes. I think so. Yeah. Yes, I think you're right. Yeah. I see it. Um, I'll have to Google it. Just a quick question. Isn't there an ordinance that deals with signs for the town uh, of Lakeville? Yeah, uh, zoning board. Um, they've been known to, to be kind of relaxed on that. And most recently, Dollar Tree and, and Seasons gas stations, their, their signage is bigger than what the uh, you know, zoning says it can be because they just approve it. Very We're getting bigger and flashier signs all the time. Mm. Anything we can say about that in the master plan? In our plan, we talk about like uh, uh, is the light pollution. That's right. In our, and, and this falls under light pollution. And you were raising your hand, Mike? I was just, I, I was actually going to ask Brian if, if the house had any historical significance, uh, just if, if he had any idea how old that house was. Because I wrote a little paragraph that I never did put on Facebook, but I just wanted to tell people that they needed to go say, say goodbye to a little piece of Lakeville's past. Because uh, when that house was built, it was a very different type of thing. Horse and buggies probably went by that house. Am I right, Brian? Would that have been true? That house is that old, isn't it? Well, it, that street was the toll road. It ran from Bridgewater to the old town hall. All right. I do believe the Lakeville Historical Commission cleared it for demolition. We have yeah, no money yeah. to save it. Uh, yes, I understand. And nobody, it, right now it's in such bad condition, nobody would want to move it, so... It's a money issue in most cases. Yeah. If it's something really important, we intend to try and save it, but it's very difficult. It it is a little bit of a sad case. I mean, but it uh, it it that's the trouble about some old houses. They're built so close to roads that uh, if something happens to the road, that it's, you know, it's, it's the end for the house, so that. Well, actually the house was probably, the roads have gotten wider. You know, the house hasn't moved, but over time, the roads have gotten wider. Oh, and yeah. And so, yeah. you know, I mean, that section of Bedford Street at one time was a divided highway with grass down the middle. Really? And there's no yeah. side of that now. Hmm. Hmm. We bring that back? <laughs> well, I think we would have a problem. It'd be nice, yes, but uh, you know, money. Mm -hmm. All right. Um that's all for that property, unless anybody has anything else. Move on to the next one. Lakeville Country Club, which um, I don't know if there's anything new about the uh, which is the um, distribution center that they were talking about putting there. Because uh, yesterday or the day before, I saw them advertising trying to sell two-year memberships to the golf club. So that might be a good sign that they... They don't expect that sale to go on, or they're just no trying to hedge their bet. Anybody else heard anything about that one? Uh, Brian Reynolds, no. Okay, so and the next property is their the Barren Hills properties. They're still building on their land. Uh, Across the street in a Rhode Island road. I haven't heard anything about what they were talking about. It's been about a year since we first, I think, uh, put them on our radar that they were talking about selling their golf course. And I have not heard anything probably in that long. So, 
Um, nothing new has come up Mr. as far as Mr. I know. Mr. Chairman? Yeah. Go ahead. Mr. Chairman? Go ahead. Um, I, I, I'd like to step back to Lakeville uh, uh, Country Club, if we could, because I don't know if Fred is on board with just what happened with that. It uh, it was taken out of chapter, uh, 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 what is it, chapter 61, but the, the sales price on it was something, am I remembering this right, $8, $8 million? So it was yeah, so overpriced, was, no, but the yes. town couldn't touch it. And uh, even though it was, it had been it indicated as one of our priority protection properties, it was so outrageous that, that we couldn't do it. And so it was taken out without the town exercising its, uh, uh, its, its uh, a first approval type thing. I, I heard they had that. buyers lined up before, you know, they had the purchase and sale signed before we even knew it was for sale. So no negotiating could be done because they already had the purchase and sale, but you know, maybe it's not happening now, who knows? Uh, the people at the golf course continue to uh, say that it isn't, it's gonna be continuing to be operated as a golf course, but they would probably say that automatically just trying to protect their jobs and their personal interests. Right. So I, I wouldn't hold anything uh, serious about what their comments yeah. would be. Yeah. 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 Just one other, just one other thing, for, uh, Fred, I don't know if you're aware of this, but the same owns the little house. Uh, well, it's actually his wife that we were just talking about, and he owns the uh, uh, the state hospital property. That's the same person. Oh, I did not know that. <laughs> Interesting. A former former uh, selectman. <laughs> well, I thought the little house was owned by his wife, Brian Reynolds. Speaking. Yes, it is owned by his wife. <laughs> okay, so there is a slight difference here in, you know, technicality. <laughs> technicality. All right. Um, so we can move on to the next one then. Uh, discuss the chapter land spreadsheet of the Lake Bill 61A, B, and C properties. I haven't done anything new with those in the last month. I don't know if anyone else has had a chance to really take a look at it. So what's our plan with that anyways? We, we are gonna identify who owns each one of them and then kind of put them in a order of who we should approach to- Well, the first step we did was try to get some feedback on you know, the uh, Facebook groups. And Mike did that already in November or before our November meeting, actually. Um, so now people are aware, you know, if, if they, hopefully people who own these properties have some awareness that, you know, the town would be interested in hearing about it first if they're uh, thinking about selling. Um, so now we need to go in with more of a direct approach and we'd have to, we have the, we, we do have them identified who owns them. So we can go more directly to each individual and just see what kind of interest they have or if they don't have interest in. How does this plan overlap with the um, non-conforming properties uh, thing that we mentioned earlier? You know, they, I really think they would both be, uh, you know, it could be done in conjunction with each other, really. Um, I think we would have to, uh, I think most of the priority ones, that, <coughs> excuse me, the 61 A, B, and C are more priority. Um, they're bigger. It would cost more. The non-conforming ones, what we were being asked to identify is, you know, just smaller properties um, just to stop them from getting approved to build on. Um, and I think it was Mike that suggested we identify which ones might be abutting something that uh, um, 
is mm-hmm. already being protected in some way. You know, just to narrow down, um, you know, exactly, you know, what would be useful for us to protect. Yeah, if we if we did that and we could combine our efforts on the two different types of properties and just do it all at once. Go ahead, Mike. Does that involve, does that involve a field trip? <laughs> mm-hmm. It involves a few of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, we may be able to use, um, I don't remember the name of it, Oliver, I believe. Yeah. Uh, to the, the, the GIS map. Right. To, yeah. to locate yeah. the properties yeah. and see what they're adjacent to. Nice. So, do it from no. the comfort yeah. of your living room. Yeah. And then double check with the field trip. <laughs> yeah. Just to get eyes on and see what we're talking about. All right. Um, anything else with these uh, properties? All right. Next one. Uh, I think it was this summer when I brought it up that I was hoping to find a new chair by January. So hoping someone was able to think about it, maybe want to step up. Uh, we can do a nomination and a vote for new committee chair. Anyone have any interest or thinking about nominating someone? You want to do it, Mike? I was going to nominate Adam. He'll probably shoot me. <laughs> <laughs> we got a nomination for for Adam. Well, well, um, that, Adam. <laughs> I, uh, I'm I'm only reluctant uh, due to the uh, the expectation of a time commitment. I have um, an additional family member on the way. Uh, oh. Oh. oh! Congratulations! A few months to go, but uh, that's on the horizon. So maybe, maybe Jesse, you could tell me um, what it, what does it entail? What do I not know? What do you not know? Um, I pretty much just go to you for everything, anyways. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse, are you required to step down? No, no, no requirement. Oh, you just uh, need a break, huh? Yeah, I, I've been I've been stepping back from some things lately. Um, I've been thinking about. I think it was the summer when we first discussed this. I want to say it's been that long. So I just wanted to plan ahead, you know, and I gave it probably six months or close to that. Um, I've been doing it for a year and a half. I think I started July of 2019. So just this to... is on a couple of different boards in town, though. This isn't the yeah. only one that he is on. So, right. Yeah, I, I got a lot of commitments. <laughs> just to, well, I'm really too new to off the board. Me. Just kind of step back from my. You know. Jesse, are you, you still on park commission? I am. So you are you are our park commission rep, right? You will find in that thing that I worked on that the park commission rep has has some things to let us figure out. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> right. Well, we could nominate someone who's not present at this meeting. <laughs> <laughs> Punishment for not showing up. <laughs> who's that? <laughs> I got, I got an email from someone who said they couldn't make the meeting. That's just a yeah, problem. that sounds fair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Jesse, um, how much time does it take you to like your interactions with town hall and stuff? Is that a big time? Um, no, really. Maybe two hours a month, you know. I interaction with them lately has been less. Um, it's not a whole lot. Putting the agenda together, just distributing emails. Right. Which I don't think I've been on top of as fast as I used to be. So kind of hoping this is someone else would do it. <laughs> Adam, with that kind of a time, uh, with that kind of a time commitment, are you are you interested? 
Um, a couple hours a month and putting together an agenda. Yeah, that doesn't sound uh, overly challenging. Um, my yeah. only reluctance is with, with the horizon, as, as I told you. Um, it, let's give it a shot. <laughs> well, yeah. then I would second the nomination, Mike. I, I'm sorry, Mike. No, I was just I was just going to say to Adam, a large part of it is being technically competent and uh, well organized, which I am not. <laughs> but you were the chair for a few years, weren't you? It worked out. <laughs> oh, it was almost it, it was continually a disaster, Jesse. <laughs> OK, so we, we have a nomination. He's he's willing to give it a try. We have a second. So um, I'll do a roll call vote then starting on left to right on my screen going with, with Liz Nash. Hi. Oh, oh, wait, any further discussion? I'm there sure. we go. Okay. Any further discussion? Nothing heard? All right. Liz said aye. Mike Schroeder? Aye. Aye. Adam Young? Sigh. <laughs> aye. 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 Uh, Brian Reynolds? Aye. And myself, Jesse Medford? Aye. It's in, uh, unanimous in favor for... Adam Young being the, the next chair effective uh, tonight. Wow. <laughs> well, uh, thanks, for your, uh, thanks for your votes. I uh, hope I can live up to the, um, the standards that Jesse has put together. I was going to say thank you, Jesse, because thank you, Jesse, for the last year and a half, too. Yes. Yeah, it's, it's, and it has been an honor. This has been the... Uh, you know, all the things I'm involved with, this is the one I've always been the most passionate about. So, you know, I, I love being on open space and I'm not leaving. Yeah, I just, just free up a little bit of time. And thank you very much, Adam, for stepping in. Right. Next thing on the agenda, um, new business, any new correspondence and announcements. Um, I have, they gave me a letter. I don't have it uh, with me and I was having trouble with the scanner. Um, it was some, a, a resident sent uh, an article from a golfing magazine um, talking about the, um, you know, reasons to preserve golf courses so we'll have to get the scanner and, and send it out to everybody that'll be interesting yeah. um, next would be discuss agenda items for next meeting anything new that we should add to it oh we had all right there there was an email i sent after um after I put the agenda together, I forwarded an email to everybody about a different property that's new um, to our list. Let me look at my sent files. I know the address to that one was. Uh, it's a site plan review for 271 Bedford Street. And Second, I'll put this on my screen, share screen. Uh, site plan. Go. All right. On December 23rd, 2020, a representative from Zenith Consulting Engineers LLC distributed a site plan for 271 Bedford Street. PDF file for this plan is also attached. Planning board will review this plan January 14th. That is uh, eight days from now. Uh, please review and forward any concerns your board may have regarding the site plan to the planning board at your earliest convenience. Call the blueprint up on my screen. All right. Do you see the blueprint now or is it still on the letter? The letter. 
All right, stop share there. Share the blueprint. There we go. All right, now you should see it. Uh, I don't know that I can shrink it or anything. Now, 271 Bedford Street, what this property is, it is um, right next to the new <coughs> the new ball fields, uh, Ted Williams Camp by Loon Pond. Um, it's the fence company. Uh, oh, okay. One side, on the other side, uh, the, the gun shop is there. So this building, um, I'm not sure what's being modified. Let's see, site notes. I don't know if I can zoom in here. Yeah, it's not giving me a zoom in option. Jesse, is that all you got was just the uh, graphic? Just uh, this plan? one page, yep. No, no documentation as to what they wanted to do and why they wanted to do and well, how they're gonna get it done? On the right over here, it says site notes and construction notes, but I can't read it. It won't let no, me. No, I can't. Uh, Jesse, the, um, there is a zoom. It, it only shows when you hover your mouse over the bottom right of the PDF. It's, right. Um, yeah, right, yeah, right there. Okay, there we go. Like Mike said, you got to be technically competent. <laughs> All right, so screen. Mm -hmm. trying to does it describe? All right, saying what they have to do. It does I don't see. Does it describe what they're doing? I mean, why? I mean, well, it does say proposed access easement there proposed relocated driveway okay it looked like they were just going to add a building yep i see where you're Let's see proposed relocated driveway okay yeah so here's the current driveway and the relocated ones just to the right Looks like one new parking space, I believe is what that is. Um, okay, proposed 30 by 50 building. So that's what they're doing in the back. Existing pavement to be removed. That's good. Uh, let's see, what's this over here? It looks like Okay, more pavement to be removed. Um, yeah, so they have till the 14th if we have anything that we want to, to uh, say about this. But uh, nothing jumps out at me as something that... You know, it's like it looks like it's going to be less pavement than it already is, so... I would think our only concern would be an increase in impervious surface. And if it's within the allowed amount, uh, allowed amount then nobody's going to pay much attention to us anyway. But, uh, right. but it looks like it's not an increase. In, an in increase. It looks to me like it's going to be a decrease. Yeah. It, yes, I agree. Yeah, yeah. So I think it's, you know, positive. Um, all right. So that was all the, New stuff. Oh, let me get out of that share screen. Stop sharing. Back to the agenda. So discuss agenda items for next meeting. Um, I don't have anything to add other than that. Uh, discuss any other business not mentioned in the agenda that may properly come. Agenda? A, a, a comment about agenda? Yep, go ahead. Um, I'm not so sure that my technique of, of what I have sent to people is going to be useful, but uh, if, if people decide it's not, okay, I, I, I won't be too crushed. 
But if mm. it is useful, it, 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 I would like for people to step forward. And I've already said that I would be happy to be the one to deal with Nate, Nate Darling. But if uh -huh. other people could look it over and decide, okay, maybe you'll be the one to contact the water departments or you'll right. be the one to discuss with the Board of Health. Uh, just if, if people could step forward and say what, which research they'd be willing to take on. So between now and then. Right, no, no between now and the next do. meeting. Yeah. And um, so then on to the next meeting, we already discussed it'll be tomorrow, 7 p.m. in the joint meeting on Zoom. Um, and then our next meeting, uh, just us, would be the first uh, Wednesday of February, which Falls on the third. So, I guess that would be it then. So, we need a motion to adjourn. Wait, can I ask a question to Mike through the uh, chairman? Go ahead. Okay. Mike reminded me there was some section of the historical plan that I should be working on. Do you remember what it is? Uh, Brian, right after the meeting, can I call you? Uh, I mean, I, yeah. because I need to take a look at it. There's there's actually more than one section that, that uh, uh, because there's a geological section and then there's the historical uh, background section. So if I could, uh, if I could just, I, I, let me give you a call and I'll tell you, because they're written down uh, in this thing that I've sent to people, but I can tell you on the phone just precisely what they okay. are. I, I thought there was a second one that you had, a yes. third one that you had. Well, I can, but I can tell you if if if, if I can talk to you, because uh, uh, it's uh, I need to get I need to pull it up on my computer and look at it, and then I can tell you. Okay, fine, that's good. All right. Um, so do we have a motion to adjourn? I'll give you a motion to adjourn. All right. Well, there's motions to adjourn at eight nineteen p.m. We have a second. Second. Seconded. All right. All in favor? On left to right here, Adam Young. Aye. Liz Nash. I say thank you again, Jeffrey. Aye. You're welcome. Thank you. Uh, Brian Reynolds. Aye. Mike Schroeder. Aye. And I, I, I also second what Liz had to say. <laughs> <laughs> thank you. And myself, uh, Jesse Medford. Aye. Unanimous in favor, we adjourn the Lakeville Open Space Committee meeting at 8.20 p.m.